Welcome again to Community of Grace, everybody. We're so excited to have Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge here with us this morning. We're going to hear from them in a second. But before you sit down, I'm going to make an enemy of everybody in the room. I'm going to ask you all to say hi to the people around you. Now, introverts, you hate me because you have to talk to people. Extroverts, you hate me because I'm not going to give you enough time to do it. You guys have already started. Go ahead. There was two minutes allotted for this. <laughs> I should have known better. 
I should have known better. Sorry for those of you that sat down. We're going to stand again and keep singing. <laughs> The time has come to receive our morning offering, so you may have a seat. And uh, just to be clear, the baskets that are being passed around, that's the offering for Community of Grace, the church. Um, and if you'd like to give to Adult and Teen Challenge, we've got baskets that are back at the doors, uh, as well as their table set up in the commons. Um, so you can give directly to Teen Challenge that way. Uh, but let's pray. Jesus, thank you for all that you've blessed us with here on earth. 
all the resources we have, God, we know come directly from you. And therefore, we, we gratefully and freely give back to you what is already yours. So, Lord, would you uh, glad, gladly receive the offerings that we have today? And, God, may they further your kingdom, not the kingdom of community of grace, not the kingdom of adult and teen challenge, but your kingdom, Father. We lift all this up in your name. Amen. Ushers, you may come forward. God of creation, there at the start before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath. The planet is free. If the stars were made to worship, so I can see.
Jesus, thank you that you don't leave any one of us behind. Instead, you leave the 99 to search for me, to search for each one of us in this room. We offer you all the praise and all the thanksgiving that we can. And Father, forgive us for when that falls short of what you really deserve. But know that we're going to do our best anyway. We pray all this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Before, thank you. Yeah. Before uh, I invite the choir up, I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, if you're a parent with smaller children, uh, these guys are honest and vulnerable, which we love. But they've seen a lot, and uh, if you maybe don't want your kid to, to hear what's going on, uh, we've got child care provided with Miss Britta. She's going to lead you guys to the fellowship hall, or I'm sorry, the fireside room. We're in the fellowship hall. Um, yeah, awesome. I'm going to invite up Micah from, uh, from Adult and Teen Challenge, and he's going to tell us more about what they're about. So we're just excited to partner with them and be able to um, serve mothers with kids. Today, you're going to hear stories of hope. You're going to hear stories of change. And I know that maybe not every one of you has ever dealt with alcohol or drugs as a problem, but I encourage you, listen to the stories you're going to hear today. Listen to the hope that these men are going to share. These clients behind me are some of the strongest people I know because they're taking a year out of their life to say, Lord, I need you. So we're going to start with the song, so can I have Travis come down, and he's going to sing Waymaker.
you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. kids are gone. I might have to check some IDs around here, man. I don't know. Um, but um, I'm going to keep it ready, G, keep it godly. So my story goes a little something like this. Um, my mom's from Mexico. My dad's from Colombia. They both met in Los Angeles, California, in the sunny side. And that's where they had me. And my father passed away when I was seven. And um, I asked my mom. The only memory I have of my father was in his open casket. Um, I asked my mom what happened. She just started crying. I just, I never asked questions after that. And I just felt abandonment and um, empty and sad and broken. Because I, I never had a father figure and I grew up with no guidance. Not the right guidance, you know. But um, that, um, I felt hurt and pain. And I carried that along for so many years and I joined a neighborhood gang and, um, to find acceptance. And, and I did. I was doing things. I did things that made me happy that would make you sad and sad, you know, and like, just wasn't the, wasn't the, the way of living for me, you know, but I ended up doing it because I wanted to find love and I found acceptance and they showed me love and care and just a different level of respect, you know, and with that came consequences, you know, in traumatic events that happened to me when I was younger and, um, and then when I was nine years old, I saw smoking pot. 12 methamphetamines, started really young at a young age, and opiates, and heroin came into my life when I was 17. Um, I was raised by a single mother. I love her, man. I'm a mama's boy. I love her to death. She's, um, she's been through, I put her through a lot. She's been there, been there at the hospital to wipe my butt every time something traumatic happened, you know? So I thank her for that. And 
what she's showing me, she's showing me a different type of love where a mother's love will never die for your child, you know? And I never had a father, so I never, I couldn't say that, you know? And, but now that I'm in Teen Challenge, like, the Lord, the Father, the Abba, you know, he's been there. He's always been there with me, even though there was times I never had him, you know, but he's always been there, you know. And um, I just feel, I'm, I feel blessed and thankful and grateful to be here And um, when I really shouldn't even be here at all. But um, just life's too short and precious, you know. Sometimes we all got to go through disasterness before we see the beautifulness come out, you know. And we all go through different trials in life, and we all come from different walks in life. You know, and I encourage you guys to, um, for the end of this service, to, you know, give the brothers, you know, my brothers right here in Christ, and um, to give them a hug, because some of us are broken. We come from broken homes, and some of us never really had that love, you know, and um, they don't know what, the, what it feels like to get hugged, you know, some of us, you know, but um, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah. 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 Brian. Cool, if I share how I first met you. Yeah, go ahead. So I met Brian about two years ago. Um, I was working in the outreach department, and my job was transports. And um, I pulled up to his house, and uh, his mom, who loves him dearly, hey. comes outside, and she says, I don't know where he's at. I'm scared. I need to. So I call him. He's like, oh, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. 45 minutes later, an hour later. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, the man that I see today is completely different than the man that I picked up the other day or the other year. So I'm so proud of you. Um, I look forward to hearing about what's going to be next. So thank you. So now I'm going to kind of introduce what I call the four pillars of Teen Challenge. The first one being prevention. We support a program called Know the Truth, and that program's near and dear to my heart because I used to work there. Um, I got to go into middle and high schools every single day, and I got to talk to kids about my choices. It wasn't going in to say, don't do drugs, because we kind of know what happens when you tell someone younger, don't touch the stove, it's hot. But when I, got, when I went in there and I got to share my life and got to share the consequences that occurred, there was oftentimes one kid in the class that would raise his hand and say, Micah, I never want to be like you. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Um, so that's kind of the first pillar of what I call um, the Pillars of Teen Challenge, the second one being our outpatient and our short-term program. Outpatients for people that maybe don't need that inpatient service yet, but they need the support around them. During COVID, we had to pivot from having clients come into our buildings, but it also opened the kind of field up to be able to support people through telehealth. If clients are in our outpatient program and they decide, you know what, I need that little extra help. They can transition to our license program. That program's a 30 to 90 day program. Their clients are able to really focus on their use, look at the things of their past and be able to push forward. In that program, the clients will have a care team. In that care team, there's a program staff, they'll have a program director there, as well as opportunities to work with peer recovery specialists. Um, that's something that I think is huge. Having a peer recovery specialist walk alongside you that's outside of our staff saying, I've been through addiction, I know how to get through it, and I want to be here with you. They can help them look for jobs to be successful outside of that part. So that's kind of the first two pillars. I'll come back in a little bit, and I'll explain the last two. But right now, can I have Josh come up? And he's going to sing No Longer Slaves. Fear. I am a child. 
church. Uh, my name is Joshua. I'm 26 years old. And I guess my story starts with um, my parents crossed over uh, from Mexico to Minnesota right before I was born. So I was born in Glencoe, Minnesota, over over west. Um, and growing up, it, it was, uh, my parents had to work a lot. You know, they had, to, they wanted to provide the best life they could for me and my sister. We're the only two. Um, and so they worked, they worked all 12 to 16 hours a day. Um, that, that led me to searching, uh, because they weren't a, a, around a lot, I searched for belonging somewhere else, and that led me looking for it out in the streets. Um, you know, so uh, growing up, I started using at the age of 13. Now before that, my dad was, he was an alcoholic and a heroin user. Um, what I didn't know, and I found out this year when I had, I had a one-on-one -on -one talk with him, um, that he he quit cold turkey when I was 13. So that's when I started using, you know. So I guess like the damage had been done, you know, and um, that led me to rebel a lot. Progress uh, started with alcohol and, and marijuana. Progress to party drugs, and then eventually meth and fentanyl. Um, you know, and uh, I took. I, I say now that I, I really took my my parents for granted, uh, you know, that I took them for granted. Um, you know, I, I became abusive uh, with my dad um, and uh, my sister, my mom, just uh, a lot of neglect. Um, and so I guess uh, my lowest point, I had, uh, my, my best friend had overdosed um, right in front of me, um, it, 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 I carried that with me because uh, previously he had saved me from overdoses, and the one time he couldn't, he overdosed, I couldn't save him, so I carried that with me heavy. That led to me overdosing more, and eventually, um, 
get, catching my fourth DUI uh, right before I got to Teen Challenge, I rolled my car. I'm going over 80, and uh, uh, by the grace of God, I didn't hurt anyone, and uh, I came without uh, without a scratch. So, um, yeah, that led me to to spend some time in jail for a couple months, and um, in there I met a friend uh, who sadly isn't uh, got sent to prison. Um, he came to Teen Challenge with me, but um, they they uh, gave him a couple years. Uh, but he told me about Teen Challenge and uh, told me that it was Christ Christ centered. So uh, you know, I gave it a shot. I started reading the Bible in jail. Then my first day here at Teen Challenge, uh, I broke down. Um, you know, I had uh, uh, one of the pastors uh, that was a pr his message was about uh, thank thanking thanking God for the partial. You know, and uh, at that at that day that day I also gave my life to to Christ. You know, I surrendered everything. Um, I've been here 11 months now. I have uh, 13 months sober, and it's it's the longest time I've been sober, you know. Um, and I I thank God. I think that the having God in your life is a big the biggest difference, because I've been to treatments before, and uh, I I couldn't find that love that that I needed. Um, so, you know, along the way, he taught me that I don't need to be accepted or loved by anyone else but him, and that's enough. You know, and I also um, got these brothers behind me. You know, I I realized I, I had to cut a lot of friends in my old life um, because I didn't, I didn't, uh, well, because they told me to, but I also, I also, <laughs> I also, I realized that I realize what true friendship is, you know. That's what I get from these guys. You know, they're very loving, and uh, we all we're all uh, trying to reach that kingdom. Like, it it all works together, you know. So I thank you guys for having us, um, and God bless you. Thank you so much, Josh. Um, man. That feeling of that you couldn't help your friend. Um, I want to let you know that we're here for you. Um, me especially. I've had many friends that I've I've lost to the same thing. That I held that against myself. So if you ever need to talk, um, please reach out to me. So thank you for singing. Thank you for sharing your story. So the third and fourth pillar of Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge, the third one being our long-term faith-based program. That program's 13 months in length. So as you can imagine, that's not just a program for someone that's tried marijuana once or twice or maybe had a drink on a holiday. That means our clients' addictions have gotten so severe where they've realized they needed to take a year out of their life to focus on God, to say, Lord, you can get me through this. Some of the things that they work on in that program they're not just looking at drugs and alcohol. What are some of the things that you guys are doing right now? Childhood trauma. Childhood trauma. Anger. Identity Anger. Identity in Christ. Breaking, Breaking strongholds. Sexual integrity. Sexual integrity. So like I said, that's not just looking at the drug use. That's looking at things below it and using biblical principles to get through. The clients' care teams are amazing. Um, they have their chaplains. They have their recovery coaches that are day-to-day -day program staff. They're there 24-7 so that they have somebody to talk to 24 hours a day, seven days a week if they need. They have their um, LADCs that can help them through the substance use disorder, as well as um, peer recovery specialists. I'm so proud of these men behind me. Um, they are, like I said, some of the strongest individuals I know. The fourth pillar... That's our TCLI, that's our Leadership Institute. Clients that go there, they decide at that point, I'm gonna take another year to focus on the Lord. In that program, they can earn college credits. Those credits can actually go on to get a degree. I have a couple friends that went through the program with me that went to TCLI, and now they're actually licensed pastors. So um, if you would've asked me seven years ago when I started this program, are you gonna have pastor friends, Micah? 
probably wouldn't have said yes, but now I have some amazing pastor friends. Our aftercare program, it's for people um, after they graduate, because we don't want to just give them a certificate and say, completed. We want them to feel a part of our family. There, our aftercare chaplains reach out. They have peer recovery specialists that they can still work with, and they also have groups. Um, our, they have alumni functions that they come together, and they're able to kind of just be a part of the family. Um, it's an amazing thing that's going on. Um, I've seen so much success, and I believe that success is because we stay connected. Our restoration program, that's for clients that maybe have gone back out there, made a decision to say, I'm going to go try it one more time, but they decide, I need to come back. That's a six-month program where they're able to be around other people in restoration and be able to get that support and work on the things that maybe they didn't work on the first time they were here. So that's kind of what Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge is in a nutshell. Um, I want to thank you guys personally. You guys have been supporting Adult and Teen Challenge since 1997. So. Your guys' support has not only gotten me to the place that I'm at, but it's gotten staff before me to the places that they were. I usually share a little bit of my story, but I have a friend here. And I want to hear some of her story of what she went through to get to where she's at today. So this is Mindy. Thanks for the heads up, Micah. No. <laughs> um, like Micah said, my name is Mindy, and I went through the, well, we can backtrack a little bit. I spent 15 years in addiction. I grew up with two drug addicted parents, so it was no surprise to anybody when I followed down that path. I grew up in a crime family, and it was just what I expected to do with my life. Um, I always knew about Teen Challenge. Uh, as an addict, I thought if things get really, really bad, I'll go there. And I wasn't, I didn't grow up a believer, but I had met this woman in county jail the first time I was there, and she talked about Teen Challenge, and she talked about the Holy Spirit, and I don't know what it was about her, but I believed every word she said. I just didn't believe it for me. I believed it for everybody else, but I didn't believe it for me. And when I was 30 years old, after 15 years of addiction, I was looking at 15 to 20 years in federal prison for drug crimes that I had committed, for a firearm, and for all the things, all the things. And um, I remember crying out, and I didn't cry out to a person or a family member. I cried out to the Lord, and I was like, wow, where did that come from? But somebody had planted a seed and told me about Teen Challenge, and I was like, well, I'm in a serious amount of trouble, so maybe I can go there and get out of this trouble. And what I found when I walked through the doors of Teen Challenge, and I think all the men standing behind me can attest to this, I felt love. And I felt safe, and I felt like I could, I could live a different life. I believed that there was something more for my life going through this program. And I went through this program, I surrendered, and God showed me who I was, who he created me to be. And each of the men standing behind me have that unique opportunity as well, to have the opportunity to be told who they are in Christ, to find your identity in Christ. There are pastors, there are fathers, there are community leaders, they are senators. There is no limit to what you guys can do. And um, like I said, I grew up in a pretty dysfunctional family. I had a GED and never really had a full-time job. I went through Teen Challenge and then afterwards I still had to go to prison for a little bit. Not for 15 to 20 years, thank God. But I went for a couple years, and I looked at it as my first missions trip. I was like the happiest inmate ever. People were annoyed by me. They were like, why is she so happy in prison? But I knew what God had brought me out of, and I knew the call that he had on my life. And I was like, this is just the first step. So I got out of prison. I started working at Teen Challenge, and then later became the director of the program that saved my life. It is mind-blowing what God can do when you surrender to him. I promise you. Just surrender. One simple act of surrender can lead to a lifetime of just joy and purpose. And that's what I found working here at Teen Challenge. So, yeah, Micah, thanks for sharing. Let me share. Thank you so much, Mindy. Church, as you just heard, that's the impact that you've been making since 1997. There are lives that are being transformed 
There's families that are getting restoration. There's mothers that thought they would never see their kids again, getting their kids back in their lives. So I want to thank you personally for that. I also want to give you guys the opportunity to get involved. We're always in need of mentors. A mentor doesn't have to be a perfect person. Honestly, we don't want a perfect person. We want someone that loves the Lord, that says, you know what? I want to walk alongside one of our clients throughout the time that they're in the program. We have a sign-up table out there. All we ask is that you put your name, contact information, and we'll reach out to you. By putting your name, it doesn't mean I guarantee I'm going to do this. It's saying I just want more information. We're also always in need of great employees. Someone that maybe they have a weekend spree says, you know what, I can give a weekend to come in and work alongside these amazing clients. We're in need of staffing all throughout the states. So maybe you're just visiting up here. Um, we do have centers all throughout just saying prayer. Prayer is the biggest thing, right? Praying, sometimes it's hard because you don't see the results right away. My mother and father, they prayed for me for 20 plus years. There was times that they've watched me sit in jail in prison and they said, you know what, I have faith that something's going to change. Lord, take a hold of Micah's life. It took me coming to Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge for that to happen. My mother told me a couple months ago that, you know, Micah, there was times I felt like giving up, but I just had to have faith, and I continued praying. My father's going through um, a, form of chemo, or a form of leukemia, and for many years I haven't been a part of their lives but because of the restoration that I received through Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge with my parents, I've been able to be there through six different chemo times, through the multiple hospitalizations, and he now gets to see his son is not going to ever go back to the things that he once did. And then financially. Um, because this is a faith-based program, we only get a small portion from the state, so a lot of our funding comes from churches and people like you. So if you're in a place that you're able to give financially, um, there are buckets or bins at the side doors, and we'd be just really grateful for that. So right now, I'm going to invite the band back up. We're going to sing one final song, and then we're going to close it out. So thank you, guys. Let's stand together. One of the things we value here at Community of Grace is that Jesus makes his family. So you guys are our brothers. And we're here for you. All right? Let's sing together.
Oh, Father God, just thank you so much just for bringing us all together, Lord, and just being able to share about your goodness, Lord. I just ask you right now that if anybody in this congregation is struggling, please let them stop by the table and just to reach out, whether it's for them, a family member, or a loved one. We just want to thank you, Lord, for, for just the redemption and for the gift that you sent Jesus to die for our sins. Thank you, Lord, for the congregation, and thank you for these clients on stage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, guys. That was, uh, that was awesome. Thanks for being vulnerable. Thanks for sharing your stories. Thanks for singing for us and with us. That was awesome. Well, you may have a seat. One of our values here at Community of Grace is uh, inviting first and next steps with Jesus. And we've got some next steps you can be taking this week uh, and in the coming future here at Community of Grace. And uh, first coming up is our Magnuson, our partner school, Magnuson Christian Schools, is having their annual gala. And that's going to be Saturday, May 4th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, this is their biggest fundraiser of the year, and they are really doing their best to provide affordable Christian education for the local community. Uh, and obviously, since they're our partners, we think they do a great job. But the community thinks they do an awesome job, too. Um, so if you're available and you're able to come, uh, that's, gonna, again, going to be Saturday, May 4th. It's going to be in the Vadness Heights Commons, uh, and it's going to be a night of games, auctions, and hors d'oeuvres. Uh, and again, it all goes to, to support Magnuson, which is awesome. And coming up next, we've got our Mission of Hope missions trip coming up to the Dominican Republic. Those dates are November 9th through the 16th of this year. That's this fall. Uh, there's an info meeting on Tuesday, April 30th at 530. Um, so Mission of Hope is ide or, uh, primarily dealing with uh, the, the nation of Haiti. Right now, that's pretty difficult. If you haven't been uh, seeing the news, Haiti is in a state of emergency. It's not looking good. Uh, but we do have the opportunity to go to the Dominican Republic and help out our brothers and sisters in Haiti and in the DR. A lot of Haitians have fled from Haiti to the DR where, where they are not welcomed, where they are... Um, they are uh, they're outcasts in their own island. Um, and we get the opportunity to go and serve them, and it's going to be awesome. So again, that, that info meeting is Tuesday, April 30th at 5.30. Um, and coming up next, we've got our Vacation Bible School, which is going to be an absolute blast. Uh, and our, our VBS is going to be um, for third, I'm sorry, ages three through fifth grade. And it's going to be a great time. Any of you been campers in here before? I see we still got some, some older kids. Anybody been a camper? We got one, two, three. We got three. Okay. Any volunteers out there? All right. All right. A few more volunteers. That's awesome. Uh, registration is open, so feel free to get signed up and uh, get your spot picked out. It's going to be a great time. We've also got Summer Blast going on at the same time. Summer Blast is for 6th through 12th graders. We help out with VBS in the morning, and then we go do awesome stuff in the afternoon. Last year, we went to a water park. We went to Grand Slam. We went to Feed My Starving Children and help pack some meals. So uh, it truly is a blast, and it takes place in the summer. So it is a very fitting name. Um, and last but not least, you can pick up your copy of The Current. And uh, The Current has everything or a lot of things that we do here at Community of Grace in it. And uh, it's truly a great, great resource to have. Uh, you can check us out online at gracepeople.church. And uh, you can also check us out on our new Church Center app. Uh, would you stand with me as we receive this benediction? If there's anything you take away from this service, let it be this. The Father loves you all day long. The Father loves you in the midst of your failure, in your darkest moments, and he loves you when you're praising him. He loves you everywhere in between. You are loved just the way you are. You are made with a purpose. You are made beautiful, and you are made wonderfully. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we go, just remember that if you'd like to give to Adult and Teen Challenge, we've got boxes in the back by the doors, and we've got their table out in the commons. So go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>